forward to hearing from you, to hearing the words that you have for us this day, because you do. And we look forward to hearing from you. Father, we thank you for all things, for your Son, Jesus Christ, through his death on the, on the cross, the crimson that covered sinless hands, that made our way to you. Father, we thank you again. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Let's go ahead and uh, get our Bibles out this morning. And uh, let's pull out our outline from today's bulletin. Help us follow along with the message today. It's good to be back with you. I haven't been here in a couple weeks. And uh, last week, Jennifer and I were celebrating our 12th anniversary. That's why we were not here. And Eric Salmon came up and did a great job giving a message here. Uh, did you enjoy Eric last week? Let's give him a hand. For it. It's always nerve-wracking to get up and, and talk about Jesus when you have to get up in front of everybody. And it's always a little, uh, you always get a little nervous. And that's a good thing, I think, because it helps us depend on God. And so I'm glad that Eric was able to do that for us last week. Today we are starting a new series that I'm calling The Light of Christmas. And I know that Thanksgiving is not even here yet, so um, I kind of was conflicted in starting this series and then calling it The Light of Christmas. But, but the reality is, as we move towards the Christmas season, there's a couple things I want to talk about with you guys. And, and namely, I want to talk about the holiness of God. And so for the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at this idea of God being holy what does he expect from us? You know, what does this mean that God is holy and uh, he expects to display that in me? We're going to be looking at that actually today. Now, uh, I know that Thanksgiving is Thursday. How many of you are excited about Thanksgiving? All right. All right. You don't get a body like this and you skip Thanksgiving, okay? <laughs> just want you to know that. I'm very excited. I love turkey. I love apple pie. And I love... Uh, pumpkin pie, that's really good stuff too, and uh, this Thursday I will eat of that, and uh, hopefully you will have a good time with your family and friends. As a matter of fact, today, um, hopefully you've been uh, hearing about this, but after church today, we're going to go over here to the Orange Village, and we're going to go to Red Robin and eat lunch, so hopefully you'll be able to come out and hang out with us right after church today. Now, what do I mean when I talk about the holiness of God? Now, pull out your outline. And if you don't have one this morning, you can take a look up here at the screen. I give a definition of holiness. You know, we're going to talk about God. We're going to talk about him being holy. I want us to be on the same page. So notice what I wrote here on your outline. Uh, when you de define God as being holy, we are describing the majesty of God. Now think about this. God, there is nobody like God. You know, God has no opposite. When you think about God, He is majestic, He is holy, He is awesome, He is, he is all-powerful, he, he knows everything, He is sovereign over everything. And, and so I just described it as the majesty of God. Now notice this, and the purity and moral perfection of His nature. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that God is pure. There is no darkness in Him. You know, as we think about the light of Christmas and Jesus coming to earth 2,000 years ago, when you think about God, He was perfect. He is perfect. He is holy, the Bible describes Him. He is without blemish. He is without spot. He, he is in purity and moral and morality. He is perfect. Now, that's kind of a hard thing to grasp because we don't see that among ourselves. Isn't that true? And we don't see that among, in the world today. But that makes God, God, and that makes us, us, and we're not the same. Uh, God is holy. His, he's all pure. He's all, his morality is perfect. Now, I want you to notice this passage in Exodus on your outline. Moses is writing, and he describes God as this. Who among the gods is like you? Now, I just want you to just get this. Moses was writing in a time when there was all kinds of gods, and there were statues, and there was, there was the God of the heavens and the God of the sea and the, the lake or whatever. There was all kinds of gods. But Moses said there's only really one God, right? 
God revealed himself as being the only God. And Moses, when he's talking about him, and he's talking about his society in which he lived in, and everything that's being worshipped in that society, he says, who among you, among the gods, is like you, O Lord? Now notice this. Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? You might want to write this down somewhere on your outline. Who is like God? Nobody is like God. There's only one God. You know, we live in a society of multiple choice. You can choose which restaurant you want to go to after lunch. You can choose what uh, kind of clothes you want to wear. You can choose your uh, boyfriend or girlfriend or your marriage partner. But when it comes to God, God says, look, I'm it. There's one choice, and you've got to get it right. You've got to follow the one and true God. Now, notice this. He says he is majestic in holiness, awesome in glory. And he works wonders. Now notice the next passage. In 1 John 1, 5, this, the Bible says this about God's holiness. This is the message we have heard from him, speaking of Jesus, and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now think about this. In God is light, perfection, you know, his majesty, his glory is shining in this perfect light. Now, just think about this. You might, you might understand it a little bit better by saying it's kind of like a, a clean whiteboard up here with no markings on it at all. God is perfect in every, in every single way. And it says in him there is no darkness at all. So we not only worship the creator God, we worship this God who is so holy, who is so righteous, who is so majestic, that it's hard to even kind of get a grip on that idea of God is so amazing. Now I want you to notice this. I want you to notice what the Bible says about God in Habakkuk 1.13a. I want us to read this out loud together, okay? You guys with me so far? Okay, let's read it out loud together. He says this, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Now think about this. This amazing holy God, right? The Bible says that he is too holy, too pure to look at evil. And he says that you can't even tolerate wrong. Now think about that. God being this holy, awesome God who is so far from us as human beings. He says, you can't even look at anything wrong. And I just want to give you an example of this from the Bible. When Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross, you guys remember that story? Right? The Bible says that he went there to die for our sins. And, and so when he was hanging there on the cross, the Bible says that the wrath of God was poured out upon Jesus Christ. Because of why? Not his sins, because he was perfect and holy and, and majestic. He was the creator God who came to earth to become a man, to die on a cross so that you and I can have forgiveness of sins. Now, now notice this. He's hanging there and all of our sins, every sin that you've ever done, every sin that you're ever going to do, he took that and he put it on himself. And he's hanging there. And Jesus said, looks up into the heavens and he says, Father, Father, why have you deserted me? You guys remember that? Why have you turned your back on me, God? Well, the reason why is because God is so perfect and so holy that he cannot even tolerate to look at sin. And so Jesus Christ, when he's hanging on the cross, he took your sin and he took mine and he paid for it so that you and I could have an opportunity to be forgiven of our sins, have an opportunity to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And he says, I love you so much. I'm willing to hang here for you and for me. And I think about that. And I think, man, God, that is so awesome that you would do that for us. I want you to notice this next definition on, on your outline. Okay, if God is so perfect and He's so holy, then what does He expect from you and me? I want you to know.